Uh, welcome to Conversations with Some Guy. Uh, your host, Some Guy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, for joining me on this program. For today's episode, I have Raymond and Jackie Jacob, the husband and wife team behind EDI Games. Now, I had recently profiled their 2009 release Static Investigator training on an episode of They Tried. Raymond apparently saw that episode and got in contact with me. And, well, here they are now, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, Raymond and Jackie Jacobs. Now, naturally, the following interview that you're going to watch has been abridged for time. The full interview ran well over an hour and can be downloaded at a link below completely uncut but well without further ado thank you for joining me on conversations with some guy actually before i begin i take it you both see my video right absolutely so if there's any curses you want to put on me beforehand that's fine any swears you can get that out of the way now that'll have been done beforehand (laughs) (laughs) awesome all right well there's no time at the present Let's kick off this interview, I guess. If my records are correct, EDI was founded back in 2002, right? That's about correct, yeah. So, let's see. If my math's right, you would have been, what, in your early 20s when you started up? Um, yeah. 20, 21, I really started to get serious about uh, releasing project. Did you have any formal training or anything like that? Did you go to school, or was it just all hands-on? Um, all self-learning, really. Yeah, no, no formal computing or... Nowadays, they have colleges for that sort of thing. But <laughs> So what drove you to get into game development in the first place? Um, well, I mean, obviously, a lot of the classics. Uh, I played uh, all of the LucasArts classics, the Sierra classics. I started, I guess, with Monkey Island was, you know, one of the first games that I played, obviously, an exceptional classic in adventure gaming. Uh, so, you know, you play those games, you can't help be moved by them, and you start to think, well, I... You know, I could do something along these lines and you realize that you have no idea how to do it and you just keep banging your head against the wall, learning little bits until you finally are able to produce at least something, right? And was your wife there at the time? Did you start up the company or did you guys meet later? Uh, We met when I uh, was 23, so that was 2006 or 7. Oh, man, I'm going to be in trouble. (laughs) 2006. It's all right. That's all off the record. Oh, yeah. Um, We met uh, shortly after I had uh, released Morning's Wrath and while I was still working on The Lost City of Malathater. So how many games have you worked on all together now? In total, EDI Games has released three games in total. So Morning's Wrath, Lost City of Malathedra, and Static. Uh, We've been working on the sequel to Morning's Wrath for a heck of a long time. Mostly it's been taking so long because, you know, marriage, life, etc. But also really trying to make it really good. So whenever I find that it's not good, we kind of go back to the drawing board and make sure that it's really good. (laughs) So yes, three titles. So of all three of them, which one was your favorite to work on? Oh, that's that's tough. Um, I know it's like trying to pick a, your favorite child, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm really not good at favorites to begin with, but um, I mean, each of them had you know something very different to offer. You know, Morning's Wrath, it was very sort of like, can you actually develop a game? You know, and then the business aspect of it. So it's like, oh, once you're selling this thing, you know, reporting taxes and etc. It's it's just really that sort of startup mentality uh, there. And then with with Malathedra, it it was a little more rote, like, okay, this is what it feels like to make a game, so let's do it again and do it a little bit better. So it had some second system quality to it, which is, you know, you overdo some things and you, you know, you're better at some things. So that was that was like that. And then with Static, Static was completely different because A, I, I didn't write the story, Jackie wrote the story for the most part, and, um, you know, it was an FMV game. So while I had done an adventure game before, the mechanics of it and just the process was completely different and the timeline was completely different a ridiculous three months yes let's just go back to 2009 then so apparently static took what three months from start to finish a little bit longer because our i had basically written the script in august um hired our actors via model mayhem and a couple of friends like my co-worker on the overnight shift thus the obsession with coffee coffee is my mana Mmm, heavenly nectar of the gods. (laughs) Amen to that.
we were totally in 100% powered by coffee because <laughs> we would get off of work. I would take my coworker with me. We would go shoot a set, a scene, and then we would sleep for three hours and go back to work. So, <laughs> and then we only had so much time because of the style that we had done. And I'm not 100% sure why we decided we wanted to release it that same October, especially because in 2009 was when we got married. So it was like three months after we got back from the honeymoon, I started writing a game. We started producing the game and my life was insane. Yeah, that was pretty crazy of us. <laughs> yeah. And we missed our deadline by 11 days. So it was a little bit longer than three months. Yeah, I was really pleasant during those last couple of weeks. <laughs> I think we lived in our living room. Yeah. <laughs> We, we slept with our computers. So what motivated you to even make a ghost hunting game to begin with? Well, on our first date in 2006, Raymond told me he wanted a husband and wife team that made video games. So that was one of those things that sticks with you. And he would bring it up from time to time. And I, to give you a bit of history about who I am and what I do, uh, at the time that we met, I was working overnights at a residential program for kids with special needs. I'd gone to school for education and with a focus on special needs kids. So that was what I thought I was doing with my life and had no desire <laughs> To do anything with video games. So when he told me, you know, I'd like a team to do it, I was like, oh my God, what can I do? I have no computer experience. I have no graphic ability. At the time, I had played with a camera in high school. So that was even something that I was like, well, this is the only way I can fathom doing it. So I was like, I could write you a story, even though they're like a dime a dozen and everyone has an idea for a video game. He's like, well, that's a starting point. So that's where it just sort of started from. And I have a, a great interest in ghost hunting. I wasn't a member of any ghost hunting groups, but I would occasionally go and sit in and just see how things would go. And I was really curious about it because I'm very skeptical about that whole situation. And so a lot of times I would go and I would try to debunk the things that they would think that they had found. So I was like, well, I'll tie some of this in. It's a big, it was big in 2009. Ghost Hunters was a huge thing. There were other ghost hunting groups that had started. Yeah. And of course, for me, you know, when she said, oh, you know, I could use video and photography to do this. I'm like, oh, well, FMV games are some of my favorite adventure games. So, you know, why not? Right. Yes. Why not? Indeed. So you never at any point were like, why are we making an FMV game in 2008? Because when was the last big FMV game with Phasmagoria 2? Yeah, you know, it had to have been sort of the late 90s at best. And that was one of Raymond's games that he talked about a lot because that was a husband and wife team. Yeah, Roberta Williams, so, obviously. So I think that that was sort of where I took some of the inspiration for that for. And I was hoping to do it in such a different way. Um, and when I look back on it now, there's so many things that I would have done differently, but I didn't have the education and I didn't have any clue how to go about it. Like I knew green screen would be easier, but my idea was that I was going to take pictures of the rooms and then, you know, use that. And I would have, I was really inspired by a game by Jonathan Bokes called The Lost Crown. I don't know if you've heard of that. I guess I've heard of The Lost Crown. So I really, really enjoyed playing that game. And I don't play video games. So he took photos and he made the photos be the background of his game. And he had styled them, obviously, much better than I did. But I had absolutely no experience. It was sort of a test run to see, you know, can I even do some of this stuff? And I've surprised myself throughout the years because I've learned stuff and I was like, oh, that would have been helpful to know back when I did the game. So just like kind of walk me through the production of all of this. So you started writing the story. I wrote the story pretty quickly because I had originally written the second story that never got produced. Um, the second story was going to take place in Salem and it was called um, Static Corey's Curse. Um, and it was fully completely written down to like what happened in rooms and and that was definitely more ghost hunting than the one we made because the one we made was really supposed to be the demo for that game and so it was supposed to be you get to try out the equipment you get to kind of you know unveil the story and and you were supposed to discover that there was a romantic relationship between um, Mary and John Witters and that was sort of the storyline you were supposed to be uncovering as you went through but you were also training so the idea was that here's the equipment go out in the field and see what happens and yeah I probably should have given a little bit more direction than that but I figured it was like you figured it out through the story like again it was supposed to be a demo it wasn't supposed to be a game 
and realizing how much work just that small game was, I realized that there was no way we could have done the full game. Even though we had people in Salem who were totally ready to go, like the witch house was all about it. They were like, yeah, come in, you can use any room. And, and you know, we'd love to advertise it for you. And so that was great. But because we had such poor reviews, I didn't think that after that they would really want to get in on it. And the financials just, you know, didn't work on it in terms of being a distant on-location area, getting the equipment in the place and something of that scale. The financials just didn't work. And things took way, way longer than we thought they would. On the day that we did the voice acting for Nick, we were also supposed to do a photo shoot. And that day I spent so long, and Nick doesn't have very many lines, so like all day in my home studio office. Um, going through his lines with him that Raymond actually had to take my camera and go do the photo shoot for the car scenes. So it was like I was supposed to do both and it wasn't supposed to be his responsibility. He was supposed to be coding. And he ended up having to run off and do that because it was just taking so much longer. Even the green screen, the day that we did green screen, we were in one of Raymond's friend's offices And we had like hauled the treadmill, which we had spray painted green up to the third floor of this industrial building that didn't have a freight elevator. And we set up the green screen and we had to do everybody's all in one day because that was the only day we had and there was nowhere to store the equipment. You spray painted a treadmill green. (laughs) Yes, we did. And we took it apart, too, because it usually has those rails on it. So we took it apart, and we just had this board, so much so that Raymond was the only one who could operate it. And one of our actors called Raymond Circuit Man every day after that. It makes so much sense now. Like, just thinking back to the walk cycles. (laughs) Yes. Well, we decided, we knew that we had to get some walk cycles, but, you know, if they were actually walking towards us, we were going to get, you know, difference in scale. So we had to be able to let them walk in place. And we were like, how the heck are we going to do that? And then I I forget how we came up with it, but we were like, we need them on a treadmill. I had tried to find a manual treadmill on Craigslist, so we didn't have to use a mechanical one. So we didn't have that constant, you know, sort of jerking motion that happens when you have a manual or a automated right. treadmill. But yeah, and then we said, you know, we got to cut this out of it. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to spray paint it green. <laughs> we did it. And we just got rid of that thing, too. Yeah. Didn't, yeah. The last time we cleaned out the garage. Yeah. That's really, that is DUI as hell. Yes, it Yeah. Is. Everything about it was. Um, the All of the equipment was green screen on plastic green tablecloths from Walmart yep. that you could get for a dollar. And that's why there was the reflection, because no matter what you did, the lights would reflect green back onto everything. So if you took all the green out, you no longer had anything left. Oh, my God. This is the mental image I'm getting. Oh, it was it was gorilla. It was purely and we only had so many. Like I said, I worked overnights and Raymond worked full time during the days. So we only had like these three day weekend time periods and half of them were cut off by work cycles. So it was like we would get going. I would get off of work at 10 a.m. on Friday morning. I would take Shayna and we would do a photo shoot. Then we would go to work Friday night. And at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, we would get together with the other actors and we would go on location and we would shoot either the barnyard scene for a photo. Like it was for a single photo, but it would take us all day to get that one photo for evidence in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's interesting. She, uh, Jackie had mentioned that I had to go and shoot the the car scene. Uh, she's referring to these one this image. antique car that is in one image in the game. It's one of the photos that you find. So that was, you know, a quarter day of shoot just to get that image with everybody in costume in the car. So just to get those shots for meaningless part of the game for the most part, you know. Just so you knew that guy was the chauffeur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, like all those images are what, like in that beginning scene, all those images were from like entire day photo shoots. Like the barn that we shot at was three hours away in Connecticut. And it was the only person who would let us use their barn and their horses for the video game in exchange for, you know, a credit at the end of the game. There had been one guy who lived down the road who said that we could do it there. We wasted a whole day getting there and he never showed up. 
So <laughs> it was like we're all standing around with equipment waiting for this guy. He's not answering his phone call. He's not answering his email. And we're like, w I guess we're done for the day. And speaking of that uh, first part of the game, uh, we noticed that you love that PowerPoint jump scare. I did. I was fantastic. <laughs> Yep, it was actually funny. When Jackie mocked that up, uh, mocked up the image for me, I first thought, I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. <laughs> and then I said, all right, I'm going to make it do it, and I'm going to give a nice little stinger audio right at that point. So how would you guys decide on the puzzles for the game? Who came up with them? Oh, God. This I'm is... not owning up to it. <laughs> no, this is totally me. This is totally my fault. I have never played video games. Um, so when Raymond told me he wanted a husband and wife team that made them, I had to start playing video games. Um, I played Myst, and I played The Lost Crown, and a couple other adventure games, because I can't do point and shoots. I'm a button masher. Anything that involves hand-eye coordination is not my forte. So I, I played a lot of those and I tried to, you know, I, I saw Simon in a lot of them. And um, although I didn't select the sounds for Simon. No, that was me. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, uh, and I also did not create the lights out puzzle at the beginning of the game. I just said we needed a puzzle to no, get no, the lights. No, no, that's a different off. game. That's Malifater. No, no, no. The, the, when oh. you turn the lights off at the beginning of the game, that puzzle that's so, sort of just guessing until you get it right. Oh, the circuit breaker one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That wasn't me either. That um, would have been me then. <laughs> the, the one puzzle you were talking about with the moving stuff on the fireplace and then the fireplace opening, that was actually from the demo of the game, and you found an album, a photo album in there. So it was still just sort of left over in the coding from that. And so concludes part one of my exclusive, ooh, doesn't that sound fancy, interview with Raymond and Jackie Jacobs of EDI. Later on in the interview, we discussed a loss of demo, some other unique problems with the game, along with engine game development and a bunch of other delightfully nerdy things. Hopefully you'll stick around and view the subsequent episodes, but if you're impatient, again, the full uncut hour-long interview can be found in the link below. As always, thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in between, and until next time.